We don't know very much about the effects of EMS and heat effects on the different tissues of the body, but we now know a lot about the effects of heat and EMFs on sperm quality, and it's not a good picture for the sperm. In 2015, I taught a class at, I was then a professor at UC San Diego on neural circuits and health and disease. And I decided to do a lecture on whether or not cell phones inhibit sperm health and or testosterone level. The data were very mixed, frankly. There were essentially two good studies in rats, each of them taking a standard smartphone, putting it under a rat's cage, and then looking at some metrics related to testicular health, sperm health, et cetera. One showed increases in testosterone, the other showed decreases. So it was, it was kind of a disappointing situation. So I would present both. Now there is an extensive meta-analysis of dozens of studies, and it very convincingly shows that keeping the cell phone in one's pocket. So this isn't putting it to your head, this isn't putting it on the desk in front of you, but keeping it on and in one's pocket. And it does not matter if it's on Wi-Fi or you're using cellular, decreases sperm quality, which means forward motility, number of healthy sperm per ejaculate, et cetera, even ejaculate volume to some extent and lowers testosterone overall, which is perhaps not surprising given the known heat effects of the phone. So even though it doesn't feel hot to the touch, there are heat effects. Sperm don't like heat. In fact, the most promising male contraceptive that's out there that's not a condom is a, it's like a cuff that goes around the vas deferens, which is the portal from the testes to the urethra that allows the ejaculate to leave the body that heats that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, a sauna will, it's not a great form of contraception because it's not sure proof, but it will reduce your total number of motile sperm by 75% or so. When I go in the sauna, because I do hope to, when I do lot. hope to conceive children somewhere. <laughs> so I wear shorts into the sauna and I actually put a, a cold pack at my groin yeah. while I'm in there. It's actually kind of, when the sauna is really hot, it's also, it makes it a little less unpleasant. <laughs> um, it's a little painful, <laughs> but you definitely don't want to do that on bare skin. I'm chuckling too, but heat, is part of the problem of the cell phone, but it yeah. turns out, yes, and here people are gonna think I'm a like, crazy person, but they might think that already. The EMFs, that business is real. Yeah. Now, is it so real that it's giving us gliomas? Unclear, I'm not gonna go there, the data aren't in, but it is very clear that the radiation from phones, the EMFs and the heat are combining to reduce sperm quality, motility, and overall testosterone. So it's a simple thing, turn off your phone completely or even better, just don't put it in your front pocket. If you have to put it in a pocket, put it in your back pocket. If you even better would be to put it in a shoulder pocket or a backpack. And I also, I'm a weirdo perhaps, but I don't like keeping the phone to the, my head too long, but that's also because I don't like holding the phone <laughs> to my head too long. We don't know very much about the effects of EMFs and heat effects on the different tissues of the body, but we now know a lot about the effects of heat and EMFs on sperm quality and it's not a good picture for the sperm hmm. where does airplane mode fit into this equation if at all yeah. in terms of between on and off i mean does it prevent or mitigate some of the effects it that seems have, to yeah it seems to here's what's really scary about this meta-analysis their conclusion is that the total amount of time spent with the phone in the pocket is not a strong determinant that it's it's not all or none but that the threshold beyond which you start seeing these damaging effects is pretty low. Hmm. So, you know, I, again, here we're talking about a don't, not a do. And so it's pretty straightforward. You know, don't keep the phone in your front pocket if you're concerned with sperm health and, yep. and testosterone production. Now, why is sperm health and testosterone production so correlated? And you say, well, duh, it's because, you know, testosterone and sperm. But if you're not interested in conceiving children, you might not think this is an issue. But remember that the two types of cells, those the Leydig cells and the Sertoli cells of the, of the testes combine testosterone and the androgen binding protein to give rise to sperm. So anytime you're seeing a reduction in sperm, you are definitely seeing that as a reflection of a reduction in androgen binding protein, which means whatever testosterone you have around is also not having the effect on that local organ mm -hmm. that it, it should. In other words, the testes and the ovaries are very interesting organs because they secrete hormones into the body to go have effects but they also have effects on themselves mm -hmm. and it's self amplify. Yeah. And so this just seems like such a straightforward one to me. And you said this back in, when was the four hour body published? Came out in 2010. Yeah. yeah. And I remember you and Paul Quinn and a few other people saying like, don't keep the phone in your pocket. And I remember lecturing to about 400 students about this. And I would say about half just, you know, 
by my read, about half of the, the guys in the class took the phone out of their pocket when they heard this. Mm -hmm. I think young people who aren't thinking about having children at all right now are absolutely the ones that should be most concerned. Yeah. Now it is true. You can, as they told us in high school, it just takes one sperm, but you know, it just takes one sperm. But in order to get that one sperm to the egg in vivo, you know, not IVF, but it's a so-called natural conception. There's a lot of territory that needs to be covered. There's a lot of chemical environments that need to be dealt with. You want the healthiest sperm 